fantastic day in today's episode I'm going to share with you the pattern and tutorial of this adorable large tote bag this bag is measuring 15 inches by 14 inches so it's quite large it has the front zipper um, we're gonna use the metal zipper here but you can also use the nylon zipper as well it also features this really really cute um, knotted flap front um, so this is actually a flap so there is the magnetic snap closure for this and this also comes with three um, slip pockets inside so this bag is so much fun to make and it's looking really really chic so you can dress it up or dress it down for this project we're gonna use four jelly roll strips or the two and a half inch strips so of course you've seen me using jelly roll strips a lot in my bags and purses tutorial i think they're very versatile and very very fun to work with the cutting instruction and the layout diagram is available on the pdf format that you can download for free on my website i will have the link in the description box down below so i did a little bit of mistake during the constructing of the zipper it's not a fatal mistake it's just a step that i completely missed i only came to realize it when i did the final top stitching i'll point that out for you and i will do the correction how it should be done and so you don't have to make the same mistake that I did. So we're gonna get started soon. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, if you have any question, don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section down below. And without further ado, let's get started. Prepare four jelly roll strips or the two and a half inch strips. Open each strips and you're gonna lay them out just like so. There is no particular order on how you're gonna arrange them. Simply do as you like and once you're happy with the arrangement, go ahead and sew them with quarter inch of seam allowance. Once you've done sewing the strips together, go ahead and press the seams. You can press them to any direction that you want as long as they are on the same direction. So you're going to end up with something like this and this should measure 8.5 inch wide. Next we're going to cut this piece into several pieces. First thing first, you're going to need to trim off the selvage end. Then you're going to measure 10 inches and cut. Then you want to measure another 10 inches and cut. So you're going to end up with two rectangles measuring 10 by 8.5 inches. Lay them next to each other, just like so, where the strips are positioned vertically. Then go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance. Here I've got mine already sewn and pressed. So this is going to be the lower part of the front exterior shell of the bag. Now from the main jelly roll fabric, go ahead and measure two and a half inches and cut. And then you wanna cut another piece, the same size, two and a half inches. Then we're gonna do the same like before. You wanna lay this next to each other, just like so, on the same direction. And then go ahead and sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance and once you've done sewing of course you want to give this a quick press from your accent fabric you're gonna need to cut two two and a half inches wide by 16 and a half inches long strips of fabric and these are gonna be the zipper panels and then you're gonna cut another strip the same length but only two inches wide and this will be the top panel of the front exterior shell now we're going to start piecing the front exterior shell so start with the top panel here and then the second panel and then the third and the fourth panel which is going to be the um, zipper panel and then the lower panel so this is the layout of your front exterior shell should look like now we're going to start by sewing the first and the second row together and of course you want to use the quarter of an inch of seam allowance then go ahead and press the seams open. So I just realized that I lay my lower exterior shell in the wrong direction. So now I'm going to fix it. So this way the lower and the upper strip kind of have the same fabric in the same direction. If that makes sense. Now go ahead and sew the third row. Then go ahead and sew the fourth and the fifth row together. 
Now we're going to prepare the interfacing for the front exterior shell. So here I've got my woven interfacing already cut. This piece is going to be the upper part and this piece is going to be the lower part. We will also use the fusible fleece for this project and we're going to cut the fusible fleece a slight shorter to minimize the bulk around the zipper area and the upper top of your exterior shell. We're going to start with the upper part of the front exterior and take your fusible woven interfacing first. So you want to have your fabric wrong side up and then you want to lay your fusible woven interfacing blue side down and then go ahead and fuse that with an iron according to the manufacturer's instruction. And once you've got the fusible woven interfacing fused, now take your fusible fleece and lay that on the wrong side of your fabric, just like so. And you want to center the position of this, so you will have half an inch gap on the top and the bottom part. Then go ahead and fuse this in place. So here I've got my fusible fleece already fused to the fabric. Now go ahead and do the same for the lower part as well. And once you've got the fusible woven interfacing fused, now work on the fusible fleece. And there should be half an inch gap on the upper top of this part to accommodate the zipper. So you're gonna end up with something like this. Draw two inch squares on both bottom corners. So I'm gonna use my square ruler and just lay that on the corner and find that two inch point and draw the lines. Then I'm gonna do the same with the other side. Once you've done that, go ahead and cut with your scissors. Next we are going to work on the zipper pocket. So prepare your zipper. The length of the zipper should be 12 inch long which refers to the length of the zipper teeth. To make the zipper tabs, you're gonna need to cut two strips of fabric measuring about 4 inches long and the width of the fabric should be the same width as your zipper tape which normally about 1 inch. And then you're gonna also uh, interface this with the fusible woven interfacing then you want to fold this piece in half just like so and then you want to place the folded edge at the end of your zipper right by the zipper stop is just like so so your folded edge should be sitting right next to the zipper stop then i'm just gonna secure this in place with a tiny little pin then you want to do the same with the other end of your zipper. Then go ahead and sew right on the edges of your zipper tabs. This time I'm using my zipper foot. I align the folded edge of my zipper tab with the edge of my zipper foot as you can see here. And I also put a scrap of fabric that I folded twice at the back of my zipper foot. This helps to level up your presser foot so you don't have a problem with your needle puckering. Now I'm just going to start stitching. Then you want to go ahead and do the same with the other side. Now you want to take your lower front piece and just line up your zipper with this. So you want to make sure your zipper is centered and as you can see here there is a little bit of extra zipper tabs on both ends so you want to go ahead and trim that off and you want to do the same as well for the other side. Now you want to go ahead and prepare your zipper lining pieces. These pieces should be identical with your upper and lower front exterior shell and as you can see here I've already cut the two inches square at the bottom corners of this um, lining piece just the same way as the exterior shell as well. Take the upper front of your exterior shell, lay that right side up, then you want to take your zipper and you want to lay that right side down on the bottom part with the zipper pull on your left side, just like shown here. 
Then take your upper zipper lining and lay that right side down. And of course you want to make sure that all of their edges are aligned. Secure them in place with some fabric clips. And once you've done that, go ahead and sew along the edges with quarter inch of seam allowance. So I'm still using my zipper foot here and align my fabric with the quarter inch of seam allowance gauge from my machine. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start stitching. And of course once you've got closer to the zipper pull you want to stop stitching and then unzip your zipper to get that out of the way. With the metal zipper sometimes I'm having a hard time to unzip the zipper pull when the fabric is on the sewing machine. If that's the case with you as well simply pull everything away and then unzip it and then go ahead and continue stitching again. Once you've done stitching, go ahead and open up the sandwich just like so and then you want to smooth everything out. I like using my hair marker here so I simply smooth the edges where the seams are. You can also use iron but make sure that your iron is set on the very low setting so it won't distort your um, zipper and you gotta be very careful if you're using nylon zipper. I recommend using some kind of pressing cloth over your zipper. Once everything is nice and smooth, go ahead and top stitch along the edges. So I'm still doing the same setting and I'm gonna follow the edge of my presser foot here as the guide to keep my stitching line even. When doing top stitching, I recommend to take your time and not to rush the whole process because these stitches are gonna be exposed on your final product and you wanna try your best and make it look nice and also you may also want to increase your stitch length because I found that tiny little stitches on the top stitching aren't really attractive so I used a 3mm stitch length for this project Once you've done top stitching, the next step will be to sew the zipper to the lower part of your exterior shell. So you want to lay the exterior shell right side up and then lay your zipper right side down, just like shown here. Then take your lower zipper lining and then lay that right side down. Secure them in place with some sewing clips and then go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance. And once you've done sewing, go ahead and open up the sandwich, smoothen up the edges, then go ahead and top stitch. Now that our front exterior shell is done, the next step that I'm going to show you is the one that I completely missed during the construction of this bag. So let's pretend that this is my front exterior shell. As you can see, the zipper is already attached and it's looking great. So the next step that you need to do after you get to this point is to cut another piece of lining the same size as your front exterior shell and then you want to sew this to the wrong side so you want to lay your front exterior shell wrong side up and then this lining piece right side down just like shown here then you want to go ahead and sew all around with quarter inch of seam allowance so here i've got mine already sewn now if you open up the zipper you can see that the in interior of this pocket is looking really neat and clean there is no raw edges so this is the step that i missed uh, when i made this bag if you see here when i open the zipper pocket the one that you see here the fabric here this is the interior lining of my bag and it may look fine at this point but if you take a peek all the way in you can see the raw edges from the bottom corners of this bag Obviously, I can get away with this mistake um, since it isn't obvious at all and nobody knows it except of me and you, of course. But you don't want that for your back. So don't forget to sew your second lining piece. 
Now we're going to work on the back exterior shell. Take your remaining jelly roll fabric and then if necessary go ahead and straighten up the edges again. Measure 7.5 inches and cut. Then you wanna cut another piece exactly the same. Lay them right next to each other in the same direction and then you wanna go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance. And you're gonna end up with something like this. And this will be the lower part of your back exterior shell. For your upper back exterior shell, you're gonna need to cut a rectangle measuring 16 and a half by 11 inches from your accent fabric. Now go ahead and sew the lower and the upper back exterior shell together with quarter inch of seam allowance. Then you wanna prepare the fusible woven interfacing and the fusible fleece for the back exterior shell. The fusible woven interfacing should be the exact same size as your back exterior shell and the fusible fleece will be half an inch shorter. Now go ahead and fuse them in place pretty much the same way you did the front exterior shell. Now go ahead and draw the 2 inch squares on both bottom corners of this piece. Lay your front and back exterior shell right side together just like so. Secure them in place with the fabric clips. And once you've done that, go ahead and sew along the sides and the bottom as well. So we're going to sew with half an inch of seam allowance. And if you have a walking foot, I recommend to use that. It's just because we're sewing um, multiple layers. It's just a lot easier when you use your walking foot. But if you don't have one, you can also use the normal presser foot. That shouldn't be a problem. Next, we're going to box the corners of the back, so go ahead and open this one up. Nest the seams together just like so, and then you want to secure that in place with a pin, and then go ahead and sew with half an inch of seam allowance. And you're going to end up with something like this. Now go ahead and do the same with the other side. So our exterior shell is done. Now you can go ahead and turn this piece inside out if you want, just to make sure that everything is looking great. Next we are going to work on the flap. So prepare your flap pieces. You're gonna need to use the same fabric for both the exterior and the lining of the flap. You're going to fuse the lining of the flap with the fusible woven interfacing that you cut a slight smaller, just like so. Next we're going to work on the magnetic snap. So take your flap lining and then measure two inches from the bottom and put a mark right on the center and you want to do the same with the right side. Then you want to take a scrap of fusible fleece and then you just want to fuse that on the center around the mark. And once you've done that, go ahead and take one of the washer from your magnetic snap and then you want to trace the two holes on the sides and you want to make sure that the hole on the center is aligned with your mark just like so. Once you've done that, take your seam ripper and then you want to cut through the two side lines that you just traced and you want to be careful not to overdo it. Then take your male magnetic snap and then you want to insert the two prongs through the holes that we just created. Then you want to turn this to the wrong side and then take the washer and then insert the prongs through the holes and then go ahead and push the prongs to the side. You may use your thumbs just like what I do here or you can use pliers as well. Lay your flap lining and your flap exterior right side together. Then you want to go ahead and sew the sides and the bottom with quarter inch of seam allowance. Then you want to trim the bottom corners off. Be careful not to cut through the stitches. And once you've done that, you want to go ahead and turn this piece inside out. Then you want to poke the bottom corners. I'm using my crochet hook to do this. You can also use your knitting needle 
or the tip of your pen or you can also use chopstick then you want to go ahead and give this a quick press next you're going to make the knot out of this flap so just have fun um, there is really no rule of this just do as you like until you get the look that you are happy with now we're going to attach the flap to the back so find the center point of your back exterior shell so i'm just gonna meet the side seams here and then find the center fold and then put a little mark on the top then you want to do the same with the upper parts of your flap then you want to lay your flap on top of your back exterior shell and you want to make sure that they are right side together of course you want to match the center point marks secure them in place with a fabric clip and then go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance Next, we're going to attach the female magnetic snap. First, we're going to determine the placement of the female magnetic snap. So just lay your flap where it should sit. And then the point where the male magnetic snap will sit is where you want to put the female magnetic snap. Although you want to make sure that it is centered. So between the fourth and the fifth strip is where the center point of your bag so your female magnetic snap should sit right on that seam line and the position could be a little bit higher or a little bit lower it's depending on your flap go ahead and attach your female magnetic snap pretty much the same way like we did before the only difference is you do not need to interface this anymore since your bag already has layers of interfacing Next we are going to work on the straps. So prepare your strap pieces and the interfacing as well. We're going to use the fusible woven interfacing and you're going to cut your interfacing only 2 inches wide. Since the width of my interfacing is only 20 inches so I cut one long strip of 20 inches and cut the smaller rectangle measuring 3 inches to make up the short edge you can do the same or you can uh, cut your interfacing uh, lengthwise if you want one continuous strip doesn't really matter now we're gonna go ahead and fuse the interfacing to the straps and once you've done that you want to go back to your ironing board then you want to fold your strap in half and press then you want to open the fold and then fold the edges towards the center fold just like so and then press fold everything in half and then press then go ahead and sew all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance once you've sewn both of your straps you're going to attach this to the back measure 3 inches from the side seam of your bag and then put a little mark there and you want to do the same for the other side as well then you want to take your strap and position that aligned with the mark that you just created and you also want to make sure that your strap isn't overlapping with the flap so do a little bit of test secure them in place with some fabric clips and then you want to go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance Now we're going to work on the back interior. So here we've got the facing and this one is the lining. Um, you can also cut one full lining piece and skip the facing if you want. Lay your facing and your lining piece right side together just like so. And then you want to go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance. So here I've got both of my interior pieces already sewn together and the seams are already pressed. Now we're going to work on the slip pocket. So lay your pocket pieces right side together and then you're going to sew the top and the bottom with quarter inch of seam allowance. And once you've done that, you want to turn this piece inside out and then go ahead and give this a quick press. Then top stitch on the upper top of your pocket piece. Now we're going to divide this pocket into three sections. 
So you want to draw two lines and the distance between each line is five and a half inch. Lay your pocket piece on the right side of one of the lining piece and you want to position that five inches down from the top. Place a couple of pins to secure everything. Then go ahead and sew on the lines and the bottom as well. So you're going to end up with something like this and don't worry about the sides here, you're going to get stitched anyway with the side seams. You will also need to cut the 2 inches squares on the bottom corners of both of your interior pieces. Now we're going to start constructing the back interior. So lay them right side together just like so. Then you want to pin them in place. Then you're going to sew the sides and the bottom however you want to leave about five to six inches of opening to turn this back inside out later and then you're going to sew the bottom corners as well pretty much the same way you sew the exterior back here i've got my back interior already sewn and if you see here this is the opening hole now we're going to do the final assembling of this bag. So turn your exterior shell back to the wrong side. And then you want to turn your back interior right side out. Insert your back interior piece inside the exterior shell. So you want to make sure that the right side of your interior and the right side of your exterior are touching each other and you also want to be mindful to place the whichever side that you decided to be the back of your interior piece to be facing the back of your exterior piece and vice versa now you're going to secure everything with your fabric clips i like to do it from the side seams first and then make my way around it now go ahead and sew all around with half an inch of seam allowance Once you're done sewing, you want to go ahead and pull the lining and through the opening hole, you're going to turn this back inside out. Poke the bottom corners with your fingers. Smoothen up the edges. I'm using the hair marker here, but you can also use iron on low setting. This will make it easier when you top stitch this. Now go ahead and top stitch all around. You can either use one eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch of seam allowance. I'm using the three millimeter stitch length and I'm using the universal needle size 9014. You can also use microtex needle or the special top stitching needle um, the same size 1914 once you've done top stitching go ahead and pull the lining back outside and then find that opening hole and fold that inside and go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance and once you've done that, go ahead and tuck your lining back inside. And you are pretty much done at this point, guys. And that's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time with another fun sewing project. Goodbye!